Hey folks, how's everyone doing? So today we'll be talking about uh, interactive and federated querying using uh, two of uh, AWS services, Amazon Athena and Amazon Redshift. Now, before we jump into the services itself, let's look at what query federation in itself is. It is essentially facilitating on-demand access to data from multiple distributed data sources into a single query. That's pretty much what query federation is about as it's in its very simplest form. Traditionally, consolidating data from different sources required ETL processes to bring data together into a shared format. With query federation, you reduce or eliminate the need to do ETL. Federated queries also make it easier for data scientists and analysts to analyze data using SQL, a widely used query language. And with query federation, it becomes simple to produce hybrid analytics and visualizations. AWS supports federated querying via two data analytic services. The first one's Amazon Athena. It's a serverless interactive query service that can process unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data sets. It uses Presto under the hood with full standard SQL support and works with a variety of standard data formats such as CSV, JSON, ORC, Parquet, Avro, and so on. It can also handle complex analysis, including large joins, windowing functions, user-defined functions, and arrays. Athena supports connectors to multiple AWS services and on-premise data stores as well, and gives users the ability to run SQL queries on that data. With Athena Federated Query, you can run SQL queries across data stored in relational, non-relational, object, and custom data sources. The existing connectors include NoSQL services such as uh, Amazon DynamoDB, ElastiCache, DocumentDB, relational databases like Amazon RDS, Amazon Aurora, and Amazon Redshift. We recently announced support for several new data connectors, including other cloud providers and ISVs. New connectors include SAP HANA, Teradata, Snowflake, SQL Server, Oracle, BigQuery. These connectors are developed, open sourced, and fully supported by AWS. There is no cost to using these connectors. They also support repeat use by allowing cross account sharing between teams. Federated querying in Amazon Athena enables many use cases. You can combine and consolidate data from many data sources and query it in place. You can quickly develop ETL workflows across diverse data sources using SQL or Athena APIs. Now let's look at some of these use cases in a little bit more detail. Here's a very common use case. You have transactional data sitting in relational databases, analytical data sitting in a data warehouse, and some data in an on-premise data center. The key thing here is the time to market. Customers do not need to build an end-to-end -end ETL pipeline extracting, transforming, loading data into S3. You don't need to do that. Having these connectors means you can dynamically pull the data from these different sources, combine the data for downstream processing, such as maybe a machine learning use case or a, a BI visualization. Here's another example using the CTAS command to build simple ETL workflows. And this works great for organizations with strong SQL competencies. And then there is this example where you join transactional data with logs. So let's say you want to combine transactional data with logs. And in this case, for example, CloudWatch logs. You may want to check for events or inspect the data, monitor it, or even send notifications using SNS. It's fairly straightforward to do this with Athena and federated querying. Now, along with Tina, 
Another service that supports federated querying is Amazon Redshift. Amazon Redshift is a cloud data warehouse that uses SQL to analyze structured and semi-structured data across data warehouses, operational databases, and data lakes. It uses AWS design hardware and machine learning to deliver the best price performance at scale. Now this enables a new data warehousing pattern called live data query. This is where you can seamlessly retrieve data from relational databases like PostgreSQL, MySQL, or build data into a late binding view, which combines operational data, analytical data, and Amazon Redshift local data, and maybe even historical data sitting on Amazon S3 with Amazon Redshift Spectrum. Federated Query exposes the metadata from source databases through system views and driver APIs, which allows business intelligence tools like Tableau, and Amazon QuickSight to connect to Amazon Redshift and query data in relational databases without having to make local copies. Federated Query also enables real-time data integration and simplified ETL processing. You can now connect live data sources in Amazon Redshift to provide real-time reporting and analysis. Previously, you needed to extract data from your relational database to Amazon S3 and load it to Amazon Redshift using copy or query it from Amazon S3 with Amazon Redshift Spectrum. So with that being said, this was a small overview of federated querying with Amazon Athena and Amazon Redshift. What we have here are a few additional resources that can help you dive deeper in maybe trying it out yourself or understanding a little bit more on how Federated Query works with uh, on AWS with Amazon Athena and Amazon Redshift. Uh, we have a few blogs over here, and then we also have a, a best practices uh, uh, article on running Federated Query on Amazon Redshift. It discusses how you can maximize the benefits of Federated Query when you have large Federated data sets, and when your Federated Queries retrieve large volumes of data. With that being said, I thank you for your time. Have a good day.